guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Basing miniatures is an absolutely essential part of the miniature painting process. And it's a very, very important thing that I still don't necessarily feel like I have a complete grasp of. I've painted and based thousands and thousands of miniatures. And there are kind of some hard and fast rules, but overall, I think it depends. Over the years, I have definitely learned some strategies of basing miniatures, and the number one best basing tip I could possibly give you is Goblin Green Bases. Definitely something you don't see nowadays, but there is something to the Goblin Green Base. Like, 10 years ago, every single model would look like this from the base down. And there's something to it. If your entire miniature collection is on goblin green bases with a little bit of green sand with a little dry brushing of yellow or lime, there's something to it. Your models will pop on top of these bases. And obviously, if you're playing on felt, which is what people were doing back in the day, your models would look really, really nice. Although things certainly have progressed, and now basing isn't just that thing that you have to put on miniatures' feet, but it is a way to tell the story of your miniature. It's a way to set the scene. And the way you set your scene kind of depends on the miniature itself. Is it complicated? Is it simple? Is it super color saturated? Is it really, really dull and muted? All of those different things kind of play into how you base your miniatures, but I have some strategies that I tend to follow. One of my favorite types of miniatures is a really bright, saturated model standing on kind of a dull base. This is my Vampire Lord, and she's one of my favorite models that I have ever painted. Super crazy color scheme based on a Yu-Gi-Oh card, but her base, her base works really, really well because she is so vibrant and so saturated, and the base is the opposite. The base is dull, and dark. It's simple, and I feel like it works really, really well because she stands out on the base. Similarly with my Chaos Terminator and with a similar color palette, when you have a really, really crazy bright miniature, that's kind of all one nice saturated color. I feel like a fairly desaturated color on the base works really well. You kind of want to do opposites. You don't necessarily always want to do opposites. I have some examples of when that works really, really well, but just in a pinch, having the opposite kind of color value on the base makes for a really, really striking miniature, especially when you want the miniature and not the environment to take center stage. I really want to get a bunch more vampires and paint them these crazy, bright, vibrant colors. And on this base, I actually was able to do something with one of those Green Stuff World texture rollers. Actually really hard to use well, but I feel like on this particular base, it actually worked out. One thing I don't do nearly enough of is really bright, saturated models that are standing on bright, saturated bases. And the reason that it kind of works is because it's a different color. My stealth suits are super, super, super red, and their bases are really, really green. And because they're really, really different colors, there's no green on my stealth suits, and they're, there's a little tiny bit of red on the base, but not really. They stand out really, really intensely. I actually use the Games Workshop jungle foliage or jungle plants, and they're actually made of rubber. It's not a product I necessarily recommend because it's Games Workshop pricing, so they're really expensive, but it does seem like a good idea to make the little basing parts out of something flexible that won't break. Bright colors actually look good in normal bad lighting, which is basically every single place in the world except for my painting desk. I can actually put these guys in the, ta in, in the gaming table in my basement and have them actually jump out and look good to the eye without needing like a bright light bulb right in front of it to be able to actually see some of the details. Using colors really, really intensely, but keeping one for the model and one for the base still does a really good job of separating them. One thing I think these bases don't do a particularly good job of though is silhouettes. Because the plants are so big and fluffy, they kind of get rid of the feet and the legs of these Tau style suits, but sometimes you want to reinforce the silhouette of a model. For my Tyranid and Black Templar, I go all out on the basing and I build up towering layers of cork and wood chips. 
It adds a lot of visual presence to the models. It also makes it kind of look like the model is bigger and more impressive than it is. I mean, look at this Nero Tyrant. It looks heavy, even though it is super not. It's a little tiny skeletal model and a ton of cork. But having this big kind of pitcher's mound, or with my Black Templar, having this cliff face, these jagged rocks, I think actually reinforces the posing of these miniatures. And just building up that material and not having just a flat surface for them to be standing on gives them a lot more dynamism. It like it makes them more impressive. It make it gives a reason for their feet to be posed exactly like that because they need to be standing on those rocks. And so I actually went fairly simple on the basing on these guys because I really wanted to show off the silhouette of the bases. If you just took a picture of these guys and turned them black and white, you would actually I feel like there'd be a lot of visual interest even once you got below the mini. And there's a lot more to your for your eye to look at. And there's a lot more going on than just a flat base. It is the ground and it might be a little bit silly to build like a gigantic cork tower. But I really like it for certain miniatures, especially for big old things like gigantic Tyranid beasts and space marines, because I think it makes them feel more impressive to be lugging around these giant heavy boulders. To create separation between these miniatures, I kept the bases pretty simple in terms of color. My Templar are tan and my Tyranids are green. But if you want to separate things even more, you can use texture. This is a Gene Stealer Cult Acolyte with Banner, and he has a bunch of grass tufts, and his base is actually really simple. It's pretty much just brown. I used a little bit of pigment powder to get at that brown, but it doesn't really matter what the base looks like because of all of these grass tufts. It's impossible to create like what a grass tuft is in two dimensions with paint. You need a 3D grass tuft, and they work really, really well to separate the model from its base because this model is a solid object. It is completely opaque and then it's got the paint job on top of it. But those grass tufts are a little bit transparent. They're made out of plastic. You can see through them a little bit. The light gets through them a little bit. And it does a really good job of separating a model. If you're ever kind of in doubt with basing, just throw some grass tufts on there. It always works really, really nicely. And similarly on this model, the Vine Knight, which is actually our miniature. And if you want to get this miniature, you can go to printedwargames.com. But on this base, I have taken a whole bunch of this is actually Martha Stewart flock, you know, that jailbird. But it just put it creates a little bit of like real moss on the rocks and on the base. And it's something it doesn't look like paint. It is physical. It's kind it's got a life of its own. It does look a little bit more real and a little bit. It has a little bit more presence. And so if you want to create a lot of separation between your model and its base, flocking is a really, really good way to go about it because it's really simple. You just glue it on and it does a ton to separate your miniatures and to make them feel like they are something different than what they're actually standing on. You see this a lot actually in Golden Demon entries where the model will be painted and it's painted beautifully and immaculately and perfectly. And then the base is just kind of made of rubble and flock and pigment powders, and it feels incredibly different. You instantly see that line of separation, and I think that has to do with texture. Texture is a really powerful tool in miniature painting, and it's one that I actually haven't experimented with enough. I have a ton of flocks and textures and static grasses, but I feel like I always reach for the tufts just because they're so easy and they're so simple. But maybe one of these days I'll get one of those electric static grass applicators and see if I can actually do some real work with them. But maybe you don't actually want separation because that is actually something that can happen with miniature painting. These Nightkin from Fallout Wasteland Warfare, I, I wanted them to look right out of the game, ripped right out of the actual video screen. And so to create that look, I actually painted these bases using all of the same colors that I used to paint the Nightkin. I, they're different kind of there's different painting going on and different textures to add a little bit of separation so that you can actually tell the difference between his foot and the ground he's standing on. But using all of the same colors, set them in the same universe. Like when you look at a, a physical picture that somebody took, all of the colors in that picture kind of exist coherently. They were all you can. That's why you can tell like photoshops or bad CGI is when colors look complete like there's different colors in one object that don't exist everywhere else in the picture. And so using the same colors on these Nightkin is how I made them look appropriate, how I kind of made them look more video gamey than my normal miniatures. 
And I really, really like Fallout Wasteland Warfare. It's a really, really fun game. And I love that I get to play with the characters that I have. I think I have like three or 400 hours in Fallout New Vegas. I absolutely adore that game. And it's really fun to play it on the tabletop. And of course, I want to make it look exactly how I remember it from the game. I literally, I put paint on my computer screen one time to try to get like the sapia, the Fallout New Vegas sapia that exists in the actual game. I just wanted to make it perfect. I've used all of these different techniques to try to tell a story with my basing and give my miniatures that extra oomph to make them feel really special. And I also have a favorite and least favorite base I have ever made. But first, our Patreon. Over there, we have a new set of terrain every single month. This month, we have the Plasma Pipes, a totally tubular set of generators, plants, and little robo-skeleton workers. A totally tubular set of terrain with magnet slots that is ready to crisscross a battlefield. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings-on here at Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain, you can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. My favorite miniature base I have ever made is this little fella. This is an Anvil Industries miniature, the heavy gunner guy. I don't remember the exact name of him, but I love him. I was playing a lot of Zombieville USA, the little app game where you run around and you shoot zombies. I actually painted this guy up live on camera and it was a viewer suggestion to do all the little hazard striping, which I think makes the miniature. But he is so fun and saturated with color. I kit bashed and converted him a, a little curbside base. I actually used like every little tool I have in my toolbox to make this hole punch out of the ground. He's got little leaves, he's got grass, he's got little bullet casings. The yellow line that runs along the edge of the road, I actually mixed yellow paint with plastic putty to make it kind of thick and chunky. I built this little curb out of extra plastic I had laying around. I absolutely love this guy. And I wish I had a more excuse to paint miniatures like this. This guy's not part of a game or part of anything. It's just a neat miniature I saw online one day, but I love this guy. He is a super saturated model on a fairly desaturated dark base. And he really, really pops out and is really well framed by this base. My least favorite base that I have ever made is this Gene Stealer cult fella. I thought I was being clever with my Gene Stealer cult. I still haven't found a color scheme that I absolutely love. I started off with the just the Games Workshop box art, and then I added in some green and brown. And I'm very happy with his little friend and the guy, but that base, there's not really anything to that base. None of it works really well. I don't think the huge mound of earth really helps his silhouette. It kind of just makes the base feel really heavy and him look really small. It kind of makes him a little bit childlike. And I don't know what I was thinking with all of these grass tufts and flocking because it doesn't really work. There's no kind of lime or earth green and yellow on his body. And yet there it is on the base. And I don't think I painted this base. I think I just left the overspray from when I was painting this model. I let it land on the sand and then I just threw on my grass tufts because I thought it would all kind of work together. Some of the colors that exist on the miniature are going to exist on the base and it'll make it cohesive, but it really doesn't. I definitely need to kind of rethink this base, definitely make it a little bit smaller so that he has a little bit more presence on this base. Get rid of all of the flock and the grass tufts because although it is separating him, it looks really bad. Maybe some grass tufts that actually are the correct color or have colors that match the actual characters on the base, or just something much, much darker to help him stand out on the base would look a little bit better. But man, this is basically the story of my entire Gene Sailor Cult collection. It is an absolute mess and I need to go through it and get it to a place where I'm happy with it. But yeah, definitely my least favorite base of all time. But with that being said, I love basing miniatures. It is the final little cherry on top of painting miniatures. I even love a little goblin green nostalgia from time to time. But basing miniatures is really, really fun because you get to decide what kind of environment and world your miniature lives in. And then you get to make it real. And you get to do things that are different than painting. Because painting, you're just trying to recreate what's in your head or kind of recreate something that you're envisioning 
Where with the base, I feel like usually it's happy accidents. It's sand, it's dry brushing, it's literally squirting paint onto the base sometime and mushing it in there with a really rough, ugly paintbrush. I really, really like basing miniatures because I feel like there's a lot of freedom in it. Thanks for watching.